Olga Peritiatko, one thing about Adina is that it's a feminist role. And I was also thinking about the first track of your Sony album, which was Donna Fiorilla, mm -hmm. who also is a bit of a feminist. Yeah, so are that's you a exactly feminist? my words, you know, my words about Fiorilla. It's the uh, first feminist, uh, f feminine, feminism opera, yeah? Yeah, yeah mm. Adina is quite a difficult character, you know, because it's very simple to be very antipathical and uh, stronze in Italian. <laughs> a piece of shit? No, stronze is like something like a uh, bitchy. Oh. And uh, that's exactly what I don't want. That's why my decision was uh, how I see the role. I, uh, Adina is totally in love with the Nemorina from the beginning. But, uh, you know, like a young people, we don't want to show it sometimes. And that's what it's about. But uh, at the end, uh, you know, the uh, Donizetti was a genius because it's, uh, this opera is full of wonderful melodies. It's, it was like a pop music, I think, uh, <laughs> 100 years ago. Uh, like, you know, uh, opera singers are for, for, were for that people like Lady Gaga now. It's like a freaks on the stage. It's something what you never ever see in your real life. And that's why all this madness scene and whatever, and then, you know, everybody kill everybody. And this opera, I am alive, I'm still alive, you know, and it's such a, such a joy not to be killed once. <laughs> and because the next, the, the, the whole season, I will be Gilda after, you know, uh, go to New York and Madrid and Opera de Basti, and it's all, always Gilda. And uh, yeah, they kill me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the secret is to find something more in the character, in the role, not to be only, you know, only one uh, floor. So I uh, try to find something maybe more sense in this. And uh, yeah, I don't want to be antipathica, uh, Adina antipathica. And but in this staging, it's you know, uh, did you see the set? Not yet. Not yet, okay, so it's a secret. Uh, it's on the beach. <laughs> Don't have to eat anymore, <laughs> because we are all in the costumes, you know, and we, you should be... You mean you're wearing a bathing suit? Absolutely, oh. so that's why it, uh, this morning I was 40 minutes uh, jogging, and uh, that's my life. <laughs> no, you know, it's, uh, it's fun, because uh, your work, your job, gives you the different challenges and possibilities and uh, be positive, stay positive and uh, so do, your, do your best. About <laughs> your job, you told me just before the interview that your worst nightmare would be to wake up and wondering where you were sitting yeah, on the world. It, it, happening, it happens with me quite often because <laughs> uh, today I'm in Brussels. Uh, tomorrow I will be in Berlin. Uh, I, I was in Hamburg and in Frankfurt in last week, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you just wake up in the uh, in the night, and the first 30 seconds you are thinking, where am I? And uh, because uh, you know every uh, hotel room, it's quite the same. The same. And uh, okay, here I see the. The, the light from the right, right. No, it yesterday, yesterday it was on the left. Okay, where am I? <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's my life. <laughs> so let's get back to the, the, the opera and the character of Adina. Uh, okay, it might not be a feminist, but what makes her finally uh, show her love to Nemorino, who we must admit is a bit of a fool? No, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. I, I think, you know, my, uh, the best Nemorino uh, I have seen, it was uh, Pavarotti. And he didn't play the fool at all, because it was just uh, the, the story who, uh, he tells me, me, Adina, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nemorino to Adina, and the, in the first duet, it's very poetical text, and uh, it's not a foolish at all. He is simple. He's simple, modesto, a saggio, uh, uh, yeah, translated in, in English. Uh, mod modest? Yes, modest. Uh, yeah, and yeah, a simple person, you know. Not but Belcore calls him a mezzo pazzo. Uh, yes, but Belcore is a <laughs> different, different character. He is a fool if, if you <laughs> want to call somebody a fool. Uh, yes, and, um, and he was my first love. And uh, he told Adina, uh, you can forget 
everything, but not your first love. And uh, what we as audience uh, forget all the time. And uh, that's the secret, maybe. Uh, that's my key to the role, you know. And uh, it's, uh, we have a, such a liaison, so we are friends, and with, uh, we know each other since 100 years, and we were maybe ch children playing together. And uh, then, you know, you grow up, and uh, he became a man, man and uh, I'm, I'm still in love, but, uh, you know, to, like a <laughs> in, our, in our life, it's, uh, it's like that. We don't want to show our feelings. Yeah. Y you were talking about growing up, and I was wondering, when you were a little girl, you, I, I think you start singing very early. Uh, what was your dream? No. Did you, did you <laughs> but you sang in the choir, right? Yeah, in I mean, singing in the choir, singing yes. uh, in general, yes, of course. But I what was three. What I was, was two, maybe. <laughs> what was your childhood dream? To be a singer? No, I wanted to be a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> but you are, you are a bit of a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, <laughs> uh, no because um, the, our flat in St. Petersburg, it was in the same building where the Vaganova uh, Ballet School is until now. And uh, we had a lot of friends from this, uh, you know, zone of the theater and uh, from ballet. And uh, I wanted to be ballerina like, like them. But uh, then one teacher uh, told me, yeah, you will be very tall. Mm -hmm. And because they they see some something like you know from, with the bones, I don't yeah. I don't understand uh, how, but uh, you know I, I did dancing, but uh, I was dancing, and but it was like uh, normal, you know, waltz, all this, all this stuff, and salsa. I love them to, for example, dance salsa with my friend uh, and colleague, a wonderful colleague, Le uh, Larry Brownlee. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were once in Amsterdam, and he's dancing everywhere. <laughs> and uh, we were in the club, uh, just <laughs> dancing salsa. Why not? Uh, yeah, and singing, yes, but uh, solo singing, it was quite late, because I was 22. So how does that happen in your life? Yeah, um, so in Russia there is a, a different system, education system, because it, it's... Uh, um, one level in between your musical school and the conservatoire. It's uh, I, like a college, yeah? College of Music. And I was in this college and I was 15. It was too early to start with singing. But so my father and I, we have decided to try choir conducting. It gives you theoretical base and musical base and I will be always thankful for that. Because, you know, I can play piano and uh, learn alone, my new roles and songs, and uh, maybe the modern music, uh, okay, my modern music stopped at Stravinsky, <laughs> maybe, and Richard Strauss, but uh, earlier, yeah, in Berlin, I did a lot of modern music, and uh, you can study very, very fast, and it helps in your work. Uh, that's why I was really happy to, to be there. And uh, when I was 19, I think, I started to, th uh, to sing private. Uh, because my father, you know, my father told me, no, you should sing, you should be a singer, opera singer. I said, Papa, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> because uh, when I was 15, seven, 16, 17 years old, and it's, it was totally different, you know, Priorita, no? Yeah, <laughs> priority. it was another priority. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, in the choir I was, you, uh, you hear my voice, yeah? Uh, uh, second altus, yes. so the lowest. And uh, it's good. It's everything what's happening with you in your life. It's exactly what it should be. Because nobody touched my high notes. And that's why I have it, maybe. Well, who knows? <laughs> and uh, my first uh, teacher, she told me, yeah, you have voice, we can work together, but uh, you are not a med, so... And I was totally depressed for a couple of days, <laughs> three days. Because everyone wants to be a soprano, you want to be a mezzo. Of course, because it's, it's different <laughs> roles. It's Carmen, it's Dalila, it's Lubasha in this Tsar's Bride, what yeah. I did now. Uh, and I started with all this stuff and uh, I sang for her this uh, Aris and she told me... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the first lesson she gave me like two, uh, two, ar uh, two octave arpeggio and I found myself like a mi, fa, natural, uh, sopra cuti, and uh, it was a surprise, so we started to sing like that. 
as a soprano with the old Italian, old French arias, and uh, exactly, you know, bass. Very, it should not, it, you know, singing is not f fast mm. uh, education because uh, the memory of your muscles, it's, uh, it's from iron. It's uh, really, it's like, a, it's like a sport. You should train yourself slowly, but every day. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about, and what, uh, that's what I tell all my young singers, my, my young singers, you know, uh, <laughs> via Facebook, they asked me uh, opinion, uh, ah, please listen to my video, to my audio. Do you, do you take the time for that? If I have, I, yes, because I, I remember myself, nobody, nobody helped me, so that's why maybe, you know, uh, maybe uh, my words will be that, you know, mm -hmm that this key for the for that person and maybe impression and uh, inspiration who knows so i just i want and i love to help people you know and uh, yes it's tough but it's nice i mean i live my dream in because uh, it's exactly what i wanted to do uh, i wanted to sing uh, i wanted to travel and that's exactly what I do, maybe too much, <laughs> last month. Uh, but uh, it's, it's nice, it's a really, it's not a job, you know, it's my life. One thing I liked about you is that we arrived a bit late to this interview and we arrived, of course, up, uh, saying how sorry we felt. And you were very nice, there was no problem, no apparent problem, and yet you were a very busy woman. Uh, if you were here like at six, one hour, and <laughs> maybe <laughs> you would not find me here. But I have time, it's a piano here, so I use time to make exercises. And so but that's... what I, I'm wondering is, you must be a very busy woman, people must ask you things every day, every hour, if not conductors, stage directors, colleagues, journalists, and it does need a bit of patience to accept all this. Does it? Yes, but uh, you should be nice and because, you know, it's uh, be with the other people like you would like to have from other people, you know. So uh, what the sense to be diva in this, in the, the bad sense of the word? It's, it doesn't help. <laughs> but yet many singers say they're not divas and they are really divas in the real life. You must if have it met some them, of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to be nice and we have a, you know, you are here for one month. You have totally new people. Uh, in this uh, very short period, you should be the one family with them. Yeah. So uh, to create a comfortable atmosphere, to, uh, make, uh, to, to have fun together. And uh, it's not a stress why uh, you should uh, add stress in your life. No. So it's everything fine. Everything fine, the life is wonderful, smiling, <laughs> it's the most important thing in our life. We smile too, not too much. <laughs> I was uh, thinking of your passion for Rossini. Uh, we had an interview with uh, Maestro Zedda, who told us about his opinion of Rossini. And he told us that to his eyes, Rossini must have been one of the most modern composers because of his sense of, uh, of, his sense of absurd that would touch something like the 20th century absurd in painting. Yep. Is it something you also feel about Rossini is that he's totally. more complex and more articulate than people used to think? Yeah, he's very abstract uh, composer because uh, he gives you a freedom to decide. And it's wonderful composer for every stage director because it should be uh, made in 1000 ways mm. and uh, for us for singers it gives you a liberty to a liberty mm, to decide which cadences which how i feel today so i change maybe my my variations and that's exactly what uh, is wonderful and you should be 200 percent uh, percent fit for this music because it's uh, it will be never forgotten if you are singing bel canto with like a this tired uh, voice with a little bit of, you know, air. Yeah. It's not the case. So you should be health, and it's, it's very healthy music. And so if you can sing Rossini, you can sing everything. I mean, not v maybe Lady Macbeth. Not but yet. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of uh, operas to, to learn. And uh, yeah, it's Maria Callas, she was never ever polite <laughs> and she told once in one interview i laughed all <laughs> the day uh, if you have uh, 
lost your agilità, yeah. change your job. <laughs> Just let you know. But, but she, she lost it and she didn't change her job. No, she, she didn't. Uh, it was a different, because in Verdi it's the same, I mean, it's a different kind of agilità, but it's, uh, it's, it's still there. So it's like a, uh, your, your voice, your, your body is very fit, it's uh, very um, athletical. And uh, the, you, you should be able to do, for example, here it's in, in this staging, a lot of movements and we should st still sing, you yeah. know? And then I uh, say thank you to myself because all my jogging and yoga and these exercises helped a lot. So we are in great uh, shape now, you know? And uh, that's exactly what uh, the audience will appreciate, I hope. <laughs> that in uh, the bathing suit, of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of yeah, naked body there, <laughs> but uh, not mine. <laughs> no, because, you know, uh, if the stage director, he should, you know, mm, convince me, you know, and uh, if he convinced me, I am able to be a lot of things. But if it doesn't have any sense, not at all. Mm. But here, in this case, it was very nice. It, it was made and decided very nice. Uh, I liked it. We have a lot of fun and it works. The storytelling work, works totally. And it's something new. It's something, you know, very fresh. And I think the uh, audience will be, will have fun. <laughs> have you that. already felt being in conflict with the stage director because you did not understand what he wanted? Uh, I'm not... a conflict person so I will be I will make a lot of questions why that I can I can't feel it you know you know I can't I can't sing like that um, I'm not uh, uh, so far you know my my uh, singing artist, I'm not ready yet. Uh, can I stay <laughs> maybe or sitting like that? Or we, we, we will find the consensus, you know? And uh, yeah, just talk with them uh, because uh, we work all for the same result. So great show. If I don't believe myself, nobody will believe me. And the credi credibility, yes, credibility. Exactly. Uh, it's the, this is the theater, you know? Uh, it's not only singing, it's not only acting, it's, it should be uh, aesthetically uh, beautiful or not, if you are, it's, it's, <laughs> is it your case? I don't know. Uh, but it should be credible. Yeah, exactly. That's a good word for that. That's why, for example, this, uh, yeah, I will return to my jogging. So, uh, Gilda, yeah? So, think about uh, <laughs> a poor bus who should take your. Your body. Uh, my body. Yes. Uh, dead body. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think about them. I think about, for example, Juliet. Uh, the, and she should be Juliet and not the Bronya Transporter of 200 kilos, you know, <laughs> then the balcony will uh, <laughs> go down. I don't, you know, it's uh, nonsense. But <laughs> uh, if you are the young woman in this story you should be young and beautiful woman you know uh, everybody should and uh, everybody asks me yeah you are beautiful i'm not uh, oh I mean, that's not true i am master in the makeup oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know where you, if you are sitting in the last balcony you will never ever sing uh, see the face so you should uh, find something else, you know, uh, find the body language, find the other uh, keys for your roles. And uh, the body language is very important, of course, and the scene movement is very important. And uh, that's why dance is so important and to keep your body fit uh, and in best condition. It, it's everything to, all together, you know. The opera singer now, it's, it's enormous complex of uh, a lot of qualities and uh, in our days uh, you know it's maybe in in the, uh, the past years i mean 100 years ago uh, the singers have sung the same role for 30 years and they were happy we have separated that so we should be credible in mozart or rossini if you are in this case richard strauss for sure, in in my in with my voice, and uh, we should be. I can't find the uh, real uh, the word for that. Uh, 
Say it in Italian if you want. Uh, in, even in Russian. <laughs> uh, one second. Um, multi. Multitask. Mm, yeah, multitask. Yeah. Uh, so it's not simple. <laughs> you told us about the jogging, the yoga, uh, sleeping, uh, etc. What What's a, a normal day for you? Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> That's all that. That's in, in that. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> in that order. Yeah, sleep. Uh, to, yeah, sleep is very important for me. If I'm sleeping three hours a night, three days in a row, I will be for sure sick. Really? So, uh, yeah, uh, because uh, I'm nervous. Uh, in, in this, uh, for example, for me, it's a problem to fall asleep. Uh, after the dress rehearsal, you sh you think and rethink. Ah, it should be better like that. Ah, this phrase or this color, whatever. And you are thinking <laughs> without any. So I should meditate, of course. But uh, it, it, yeah. That's you think it's an art, uh, emptying your mind? That it's totally. not a gift. But jogging helps. You know, it's uh, really helps because it's uh, such activity. Everybody should do it. Or not jogging, but just caminata veloce, no? Just go yeah. fast. Because jogging is not good for the back, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Depends how you, how you do it. Pavarotti had a jogging machine in his house. Good for him. <laughs> uh, Pavarotti, by the way, his villa was in Pesaro, you know? Yeah. So, and every singer lives in Pesaro now. <laughs> we are like a big uh, family there. <laughs> it's uh, Juan Diego there and uh, uh, Alaimo, uh, Nicola Alaimo, and uh, Simone Alberghini, and a lot of, a lot of people. And it's, it's very nice. And Paolo Bordogna. Everybody who just uh, was in touch with Rossini music, uh, it's, it's so good here. It's the sea, it's the sun, it's the people. It's uh, the atmosphere there, you know, it's, uh, it's different. Uh, I think I told, you know, like 200 times in this interview. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you told me about your, your books, you're traveling around with books. What are you reading right now? Uh, normally I, I read in Russian and now it's uh, three books, two. Stefan Zweig uh -huh. and uh, I adore him. Of course, I'm reading in Russian because, it's, you know, it's for my soul, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's uh, funny, you're reading a, a German-speaking uh, writer in Russian yeah. while you speak uh, German currently. Because, yes, but because I'm lazy for that. Uh, I Isn't it a bit schizophrenic to do that? No, it's <laughs> translating is <laughs> wonderful, so somebody worked very hard. And uh, Nabokov now and Dina Rubina, it's, uh, mm -hmm. she, she lives. Uh, I mean, the writer, our days writer. Yeah, contemporary. Contemporary writer. I love how she used the language and it's like an abok of, you know, very poetical, very rich language. And uh, German, I think I have uh, read of in German, uh, of course, newspapers, it's, it's not a problem, but uh, the books, uh, St uh, Steppenwolf. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that I, I was reading in German, but uh, it's important, of course. Uh, I had like a, maybe 200 books now in my iPad because iPad has uh, become more important for me because all my scores is, is inside. Uh, f before I should take another luggage for my scores and partituras. Yeah. And now you have iPad, so it's really very comfortable. So you still need a, a suit for your for your dresses. Yes, <laughs> depends if I have a, more, a lot of concert or no. But uh, you know, uh, even in Brussels, it's a wonderful shopping. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes. Do you spend a lot on shopping? No, no? I hate it because it's uh, you know spend your time. I have better things to do. Uh, that's why I prefer such a centers where. All these brands are inside, like yeah, uh, a mall. here. I don't know. Uh, no, not, not more. Like uh, in Paris, in France, it's uh, Galerie Lafayette. Lafayette yeah. It's uh, everything there. So you should be for two <laughs> hours there, and you are okay with ev everything. Can you imagine your life if you had not been influenced by all these other cultures? No. It's difficult now. I I can't I can't even imagine because. Uh, you start your day in Italian, 
and uh, then comes Russian colleague, you speak Russian, and then come uh, a telephone call from your agent and you speak German. And uh, it's, it's, uh, there are some days where I can't speak with nobody, <laughs> no language, no, not even Russian, because <laughs> it's just, uh, then uh, I take my break, uh, switch off my phone no and Facebook. be alone, exactly, just um, like my father told, uh, like a vegetable. <laughs> so vegetable days are very important in, uh, yeah, you know, in, uh, in our stressful life, but it's, uh, yeah, it's like a aku, uh, yeah. uh, reload your battery. And uh, it's important, I think, not only for me, but uh, for every person. Uh, we are too chaotical. Mm. The world is now too chaotical. One last question, maybe. I was wondering what your greatest uh, emotion on stage has been until now. Oh, it's not only one because it's uh, everything I do. But if you could, re if you, if there was a princess here yes. giving you the, the chance to relive one thing in your career, to just enjoy a sensation you had on stage once. Arena di Verona. Why? Because of place, maybe, because of uh, 18,000 people <laughs> in front of you, because of Gilde, because of Leonucci, it was Rigoletto, of course. <laughs> and uh, Then you have to sing Vendetta three times, right? Two times, <laughs> it was two times. But it was really great feeling. And Arena teaches you how to sing, really. After Arena di Verona, you are not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you have no fear anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no fear, really. I, because now in Frankfurt, it was 20, 100, uh, 20, 100, 20 thousand. thousand people. Yeah, it was open air concert. And I had a lot of fun, you know, not stress at all, but it's uh, experience. Because uh, if you remember 14th July, 14, yeah. uh, in, Paris. Bastille, yes. in Paris under the Tour Eiffel, that was such a <laughs> adrenaline carica, no? Uh, did, did you sleep well that night? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even after. <laughs> no, because it's just, it's too much adrenaline. You know, it's uh, all these people be, uh, in front of you. Of course, this uh, live broadcast every, everywhere. And uh, these coulisses, it was uh, such uh, something. Uh, so that's why it's difficult for me to call, uh, to tell you one, only one event. Because Everything, everything, what I did the last two, three years, it's amazing places, amazing colleagues, am amazing events. And uh, just, yeah, enjoy every day. It's, it's, that's the secret. Thank you. <laughs> enjoy every day and uh, don't forget your family. Thank you again. Thank you.